Hi there, I'm Don McGarvey, the pastor of the Troy Mills Christian Church in Troy Mills, Iowa. We're delighted to have you join us today. We're going to go into one of our recent Sunday morning services for the teaching time. And our prayer is for you as you listen, as you read God's Word, and as you study what He has to say to you, that the Word of God will change your life and press you and conform you into the very image of Jesus Christ. Thanks again for being with us, and our prayer is that the Lord bless you greatly as you listen to this teaching. So in your Bibles, if you would, please, and um, we're, this is being taped, and it will be put up on YouTube a little bit later this afternoon. So uh, we're still, um, I'm still intrigued with all those who watch on uh, YouTube. So if you're watching, thanks for watching, but uh, we'd really rather have you here, uh, but I know... Uh, in Arizona and Michigan and different parts of the, the country that people are watching. And so thank you for watching. And I pray that the Lord will bless you uh, in this time as, as, as well. So turn in Isaiah 50, or 43 uh, with me, please. And um, I'm, just, I, I'm going to share some thoughts. We're going to look at some scriptures. Um, the, uh, the note page has some interesting things on it. I wrote uh, three things at the top about our past. I talk a lot about our past, and I know that, because we've all got one. We've all got a past, no matter how old you are. Charlie has a past. Um, Arlene has a past. Some of those pasts may be a little bit longer than some of the others, and there may be a little more things involved in some of them. Some of us have some parts of our past that we just assume nobody know about. Um, some of us have parts of our past that we'd kind of like to go back and repeat and live that over and over and over again, but we don't get to, all right? Some of us are haunted by our past and we're reminded by our past uh, uh, frequently, but I wrote three things under Your past is not a sentence, it's a lesson. You need to learn from your past. You don't have to live there, and that's not being punished. Our past doesn't dictate our future. I love that. With Christ who wants to make all things new, uh, your past doesn't dictate your future. And then a great future is not dependent upon a great past. I've had people sit down with me and they'll say, oh, Pastor, I just can't believe I've had such a rotten past. And I said, that's okay. You got a great future. And sometimes admitting that the past hasn't been so good is the first step to a great future. Is that we're going to go on, we're going to move forward. Um, Friday morning, we were kind of wandering around a little bit, waiting for mom to uh, uh, get up and to be around. She doesn't do that very early anymore. And so um, we went to the mall. We were staying at a place just not far from the mall. We went to the mall, and Chris went into a place, and I just started walking around, and it was a great mall. I hadn't been in that mall probably but once. They built it way after I'd left town there. And, um, but on in the upper level of this mall were these big pictures, about twice the size of this wall hanging, of the history of Alton, which was the town I grew up in. And I realized what I was seeing, and so I just started this whole whole upper level of the mall was nothing but these, these photos of the history of the town that I grew up in. And I, I remembered seeing some places like, yeah, I remember going there when I was a kid. And they showed the old Sears store, and the Sears store was downtown like everything else, and it moved out. And actually, the Sears store had become an anchor store of the mall that we were in, and then Sears closed, and they actually tore that part off the mall, and, and instead of just letting it sit there empty. And so uh, I was watching that. I watched, and, and on this picture, uh, they had pictures of Robert Wadlow, who was the tallest man in the world, and, and then they had a picture of... Elijah P. Lovejoy, and I, I learned some things about him, and, and then there was this, uh, I'd learned something I'd never heard before my whole life, and I'd grown up there till I was 16, and uh, Alton was the home of one of the great jazz musicians named Miles Davis. I didn't know Miles Davis was from Alton, but um, uh, so uh, I just, I, I, I learned a lot, and it was fun to go around and to look at the past of this city. But I was so cognizant, cognizant of the fact that this was 
the past. And on the way to my mom's, I w drove by Chris and let her see one of the, my favorite bakeries in the whole world, Duke Bakery, that had been there for longer than me, okay? And showed her a couple of things that, that had been around, and it was like, it's the, this is an interesting past. It was great times in Duke Bakery. I enjoyed that, um, uh, but that's not where I'm at now. It's not now, it was then. And it was a good then maybe, but it wasn't now. And I was always intrigued with what was coming down the road. And so God is intrigued with what's coming down the road as well. And so in Isaiah 43, he makes an interesting statement through the prophet and I want to make some remarks about this, and then we'll jump into a couple of other passages. So in Isaiah 43, look in verse 1 with me, and we'll get to verse 18 and 19 in just a minute, but look in verse 1 with me, and I just, you know, these are interesting things. In verse 1, he, um, he talks about how, uh, not in verse 1, but in the first part of Isaiah 43, he talks about how he brought Israel out of Egypt. Remember that story, the whole book of Exodus, how God brought Israel out of Egypt. He sent the ten plagues. He, he changed Pharaoh's mind. He, he parted the Red Sea. He provided bread for them in the desert. He provided water for them in the desert. He, and, and for 40 years, can you imagine this? For 40 years, they wandered through the desert. Their sandals never wore out. Their clothes never wore out. And they always had everything they needed. God went before them as, as a, a great cloud in the daytime to protect them from the desert heat. And he went before them at nighttime as a pillar of fire to provide the warmth for them from the desert cold. And so he was, he was reminding them, he said, I've always provided for you, okay? Then you get into a little further into uh, chapter 43, and you keep reading, and if you get down into... Um, Oh, down into, let's see, Babylon. He talks about how that he brought them out of Babylon. And the interesting thing about how he brought them out of Babylon, he didn't have a pillar of cloud. He didn't have a pillar of fire. He didn't send a plague. He raised up a king of the Persians named Cyrus, and he calls Cyrus in chapter 45, he says, Cyrus is my servant because it's going to be Cyrus who brings you out of captivity in Babylon and allows you to go back to Jerusalem. He says, I've got a way prepared for you that's different than Egypt, but this is different than to get you back to Jerusalem. And now what he's doing in verse 18, look at verse 18. We'll read verses 18 and 19. In verse 18, he says, do not remember, let me paraphrase this, don't hang on to the former things. He says, do not remember the former things, nor consider the things of old. Behold, I will do a new thing, and now it will spring forth, and shall you not know it? I will even make a road in the wilderness and rivers in the desert. He says, I'm going to do a new thing. I'm not going to part the Red Sea because there's no sea here to be parted. I'm not going to provide manna in the wilderness for you because you've got food, you've got other things that have been provided, but I am going to do something new. You'll see it. You'll recognize it. So don't feel like the way God has to move now is the way he had to move back then. Don't feel like God's not going to do anything because there's no Red Sea for him to part. Don't feel like God's not going to do anything because he's not dropping manna down from the sky every morning when you wake up. That original breakfast in bed. Man. Just go outside the tent and there's breakfast right out there and around the bushes. And you just pick it up and you're good to go. And so God says, I get, I'm getting ready to do a new thing. I'm getting ready to do something different than I've done in the past. And I love that. And, 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 and what happens is, and, and I love what, what Wayne had to say, is that I'd be perfectly content if 2020 is as good as 2019 was. And I understand that. But I also understand that God says to Wayne and to you and to me, he says, hang on, because i got something in store for you you haven't seen yet. I got something in store from you that's beyond what you can imagine. 
And it's not going to be like anything I've done in the past. It's not going to be like anything that you've ever heard of before because it's a new thing. It's a new thing. We don't have to repeat. I, I worked with teachers for a lot of years, and one of the things that I discovered about a lot of teachers, that teachers who had been teaching for 15 and 20 years, they didn't really have 15 or 20 years of experience. They had one year of experience that they repeated 15 or 20 times. And sometimes I think we try to live our lives that way. Was that fair to... Yeah, okay. All right. So sometimes we, we try to live our, our lives that way, is that we just try to keep doing the same thing over and over and over and over again. And, and Albert Einstein, this great genius, uh, uh, came along and he said, you know that the definition of insanity is to do the same thing over and over again, expecting different results. If you want different results, sometimes you've got to put some different things into it. Okay. And, and God is at a place where he's wanting to see some different results in us. He's wanting to see uh, a little more righteousness in us. He's wanting to see some more miracles come through us. He's wanting to see our faith increase. And in order for our faith to increase is that, that we got to be stretched a little bit. We got we to gotta step out of our comfort zone. I love being comfortable. I really do. But there are other times when I get scared because I'm too comfortable and it's like, God, am I doing what you want me to do? Should I be stepping out? Should I be doing something that is outside of my comfort zone? Even as a, a teacher and a preacher is that, that there are topics that I'm really comfortable teaching about. But now I'm saying, God, are there some things that, that you want me to teach about that are, are outside my comfort zone? Next week, Chris and I are going to start another series where we team teach together. And I think we've agreed on, next week our topic is, it's the whole series is called Heroes and Zeros, out of the Bible. And there are men and women all throughout the scriptures that started off as heroes and went to zeros. Some of them started off as zeros and ended up being heroes. And our first one we're going to talk about next week comes out of Judges chapter 6, and his name is Gideon. Gideon was hiding. He was afraid. And God came up to him and he said, Hey, Gideon, you mighty warrior. Gideon said, Oh, me? I'm hiding. I'm not a mighty warrior. I'm hiding. I'm afraid. The Midianites are coming. And God says, I don't care because I'm here. It doesn't matter who's coming. I'm here. You mighty warrior. And so maybe there's some things coming in your life for 2020 where you don't want to deal with them, but God says, he calls you by name, and he says, hey, mighty warrior, I'm with you. We got this. No, you can't do it on your own, but I'm here. And I don't care what comes along, I'm here. And I'm getting ready to do a new thing in your life. Something you've never seen before. Something you've never thought about before. Something you never dreamed that you would have to go through before. But I'm here. Some of us went through things in 2019 that we never dreamed we'd go through. We never would have signed up for it, that's for sure. But God says, hey, mighty warrior, I'm here. I don't care what comes along, I'm here. And I showed you already that I could part the Red Sea. I showed you already I can drop manna from heaven and I can feed you and I can, I can create a river through the, through, through the desert. I can create a highway where there was no highway. He says, I can take the high places and make them low, and I can take the low places and bring them up. He says, there's nothing that's too hard for me. I'm here with you, mighty warrior. And so now he's saying, I'm getting ready to do a, a new thing. 2019 was great, but you ain't seen nothing yet what 2020 is going to be. And some of us are going to go through some things over the next few months that we never thought about before, we never dreamed about before. Some of them are going to be hard. Some of them are going to be real blessings. We'll all sign up under the blessing sheet. None of us want to sign up under the hard stuff. 
But God said, I'll go through, I'll walk with you in the hard stuff as well as the good stuff. I won't leave you. The three scriptures that we speak of frequently here is in Numbers and Malachi and Hebrews. And God simply says, I don't change. Moses wrote in the book of Numbers that God is not a man that he should lie, neither the son of man that he would change his mind. So in other words, I don't have to wake up in the morning and wonder, well, I wonder if God's going to love me today. I think he did yesterday, but I'm not sure about today. But I can have this assurance in my heart that God doesn't change, that God's not going to change his mind. And in Malachi, he just simply says, I, the Lord, do not change. And in Hebrews chapter 13, and verse 8, he says, I'm the same today as I was yesterday, but I will be the same tomorrow. And so you don't have to worry about me changing because I'm always the same. Everything else changes. How many have noticed a lot of changes in the last few months, just in your life, period, in the world around us? Yeah, lots of changes. We, we, it's, things change every day, except God. And God is this constant. He's this presence. He's this, this force that is always with us and that he's always ready to do something new in your life and always ready to do something new in my life. You know, if you want 2020 to be different and better, maybe there are some things that you need to do differently. I don't do this very often, but if you need some help in making 2020 a little bit better, if you need some help maybe talking about some goals and some objectives to meet those goals, I'd be more than happy to sit down with you. We can talk about them. We can sit there and say, what do you want 20? What do you want to be looking like a year from today, when we get to the end of 2020, what do you want? What do you want things to be? And then we just work backwards from that. That's what you want? Okay, so what do we have to do then to get from where we are to get there? Maybe that doesn't sound very spiritual to you, but God works, he orders our steps. The plans, he, he has plans for us, and he'll do that and he'll provide for us. I have a couple of scriptures that I, uh, I want to share with you before we get into some of Paul's um, examples of uh, athleticism. But in um, 1 Corinthians chapter 2 and verse 9, excuse me, 1 Corinthians chapter 2 and verse 9, Paul writes in 1 Corinthians 2, he says, But as it is written, and he's quoting from Isaiah 64, he's quoting from one of the prophets, I has not seen, nor ear heard, nor has entered into the heart of man the things which God has prepared for those who love him. I can tell you with all confidence in the world this morning that the plans that God has for you are good. That his plans are not to harm you. His plans are not to make you sick. He doesn't have a disease to give you. His plans are to bless you, to give you a hope, to give you a future, to give you peace, to give you joy. All the things that we talked about during the Advent season of hope and joy and peace and love, those are, are, are the fruition of Jesus coming as this baby born in a manger. And he wants to do things in your life, and he wants to do things in my life. He wants to do things in the life of this church. But in order for 2020 to look different in the life of this church, we've got to maybe make some changes. I mentioned last week we have a facelift team, not for me. That may be, that might help improve things, Deb. I never thought about that. But uh, can your computer do that and enhance it? Yeah, okay, all right. Um, but we have a facelift team who's working to maybe change the front of our sanctuary and some of the changes as we roll them out for you to see before we do them, uh, I think will be uh, an enhancement to, uh, to the church. And so um, now, now there, let me, I, I'm going to get into Ephesians just a minute, but I got to make sure you understand this. Because something new comes along, does not make what has been bad. You follow me? Just because we make a change or two 
doesn't mean that what we've been doing was bad. It does mean that what we've been doing won't sustain us for where God wants us to go. Isaiah 43 talks about that. He says, I parted the Red Sea to get you out of Egypt. But since there was no sea in Babylon, I didn't do it that way then. I did another way to get you out of Babylon. And he says, I've got some new things that I want to teach you and new things that I want to show you. And, because, and here's, here's why I think happens. Because you have been faithful in the things of your past, I'm ready to do something new in your future. I'm ready to help you grow in ways that you've never grown before as an individual and as a church. I'm ready to help you think differently about some things and maybe about some people than what you ever have in the past in order for you to get beyond where you are. That in order for us to, do, to see different results, maybe we've got to do some different things. I have a friend, and I didn't know this, and he watches on a pretty regular basis, but I didn't know several years ago, many years ago, he might remember, I don't remember, I, I made a statement to a group of, of, of people that I was teaching, not here, and I said, the things that worked in your past aren't going to be enough to sustain you for your future. And that's why God wants to do a new thing. The responsibilities that we have change. When you were a single person before you were married and before you had kids, your life was way different than, than you got married. And then when kids come along, things were way different. And then grandkids come along and things are different again. And so you need different skill sets from being single to being married to being a parent to being a grandparent. You've got to have some different things working in your life than what you did before. And it doesn't mean that before was wrong. But it means that what was working for you then wouldn't sustain you for today. Does that make sense? And so God says, I'm getting ready to do a new thing. Don't fight me. Don't hang on to the things of your past so hard that you can't have something new come into your life. Think with me now. I think about this a lot when the, the changes that people have seen. How many remember a time when there wasn't electricity in your house? Uh-huh. It's kind of nice to turn the switch on and there's lights, isn't there? That was quite a change, wasn't it? How many remember when there wasn't indoor plumbing in your house? Uh, in the wintertime, it's really nice to be able to roll out of bed and hit a warm floor instead of a sheet of ice, isn't it? Uh-huh. Uh, how many remember when there wasn't air conditioning in your house and you sweltered at all? I remember, yeah. Okay, so, so God says, don't hang on to the past. Can you imagine that? Think with me for a minute. Well, I don't want an air conditioner. I don't like melting into my shoes. I like getting out of the bed in the middle of the night in the middle of the winter and running out through the snow to go to the outhouse. You'd look at them and you'd go, what is wrong with you? Give up your cell phone. Most of us are so wrapped up in our cell phones that the thought of giving up our cell phone, yeah, we just freak. We just freak. He says, don't hang on to the past. One of my gifts was an iPad. I'm still learning about it. And the iPad can do so much more than my cell phone. It can do so much more than my laptop and all these kind. Of, and I'm going, unbelievable. Like, and and uh, I, ha I have more uh, computer technology on my wrist this morning. I've already read messages on my wrist while I'm standing up here. I have more technology on my wrist than I could even possibly have imagined 10 years ago, Coach. And so my choices are, I could hang on to 10 years ago and not enjoy this, not enjoy that, not have these benefits. I could hang on to that and just refuse to step into the new thing that God wants to do. And he promised in, in 1 Corinthians chapter 2, he says, look, I got some things that you ain't never seen before. 
And not just in technology, but in my spirit, man. He says, I've got some things you've never experienced before. You've never heard about these things before. And, 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 and here's the danger, okay? I, I, I used, I, I've been around people who just say, well, history is cyclical. and just goes round and round and round. No, that's sinful. God never intended for history to be cyclical. He said history has a start in the beginning and it has an end. And he says, and I will dictate the beginning and I'll dictate the end. And I got everything in between. You don't have to repeat your mistakes. I don't have to repeat the mistakes of my mom and dad or my grandma or grandpa's. Or I don't have to repeat the mistakes of anybody. I get to make my own. Okay. But I don't have to live and I don't have to go back and, and just recycle everything. I, I don't have to do that because God says, no, I got a plan for you. And the plan is to take you from here to there. And there may be a couple of bumps and there may be a couple of roundabouts in there. But, and there may be a mountain, there may be a, a valley. But he says, I'm going to get you from here to there. And it's going to be in a way that you never dreamed of before. You never heard about before. I love, and I do a lot of reading about the history of the church, not just this church, but the history of the church, period, around the world. And I, and I love church history, but I love the fact that we can learn from it. We don't have to repeat it. We don't have to repeat the errors of the Crusades. We don't have to repeat the errors that, that were made in, 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 in the monastic movement where they all headed for the hills because the church was too secular and too worldly and they all went and they found a, a high mountain and they built this monastery and they hid. That was a mistake. Jesus says you're a salt of the earth, you're the light of the world. You gotta be in the earth, you gotta be on the world, you can't be hiding on a mountain in order to fulfill the commands that Jesus said. And he says, hang on, because I'm going to do a new thing. And in Ephesians, turn into Ephesians chapter 3 and, and verse 20. And I really do love this passage of Scripture in Ephesians chapter 3. And, 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 and it's kind of a benediction. It's a doxology of sort. Um, but it, it's a benediction. And Paul writes, and he concludes the first half of um, the letter to the Ephesians, the first chapter 1 and chapter 2 and chapter 3 of Ephesians is a teaching section of Scripture, okay? It's the theological section of the letter in verse, chapters 4 and chapter 5 and chapter 6 are the how-to parts of Paul's letter to the church in Ephesus. And then he concludes the first theological section and he says, Now to him who is able to do exceedingly more than we can think of or that we can imagine. To him who can do exceedingly more than we can imagine in our heads. Some of us have some pretty vivid imaginations, but God is able to do more. God has some things that we've never even imagined yet. One, one of the things that you'll never hear God say is, oh, I just thought of something. He'll never say that. I will say all the time, I learned something. Matter of fact, I said to Chris, I, I looked at something in her Bible right before I came up here. And, and, and I looked at it and I said, I learned something new about Isaiah 43 yesterday and I wanted to make sure I was right. And that was the Egypt and the Babylon, how that he says, I, did, I got you out of Egypt by parting the Red Sea. I got you out of Babylon by raising up a king named Cyrus. But he says, forget those things because I'm going to do a new thing. I'm going to do something more than just raise up a king. I'm going to do something more than just part the Red Sea. I'm going to do something more than just drop bread out of heaven to feed you. I'm going to do something more than to protect you from the sun with a cloud or to protect you from the cold with a pillar of fire. I'm going to do something more. No, you, can't, you haven't imagined it yet because it's something your eye hasn't seen, your ear hasn't heard, and it goes above and beyond what you can even begin to imagine. What a great promise that is. And it's a promise for you and it's a promise for me. And I'm not going to get into Paul's uh, examples from the world of athletics. They're all over the scriptures. He says, I got to go into training. He says, I beat my body to keep it into submission. He says, I'm running a race. I'm not going to give up. I'm not going to quit. Because when I get to the end, I want to be the winner. 
How do you be the winner? You do what God wants you to do. You grow. You look at 2020 as not something to be feared, but something to be, oh boy, here we go. When I was a kid growing up, we watched Little Rascals all the time. We were, and we watched them. Okay, I know none of you can relate to that. I've been around some of you enough to know it's pretty tough to deny that you weren't a little rascal. One of the little rascal things that I saw was they had built this go-kart. And it looked like it was ready to be junked right after they built it. But they were up the top of this hill and they're all excited about headed on this go-kart. And they all jumped on and one of them yells, we're on our way. And one of them says, where are we going? He says, I don't know, but we're on our way. And that's what I like about walking with God. I don't know how it's going to end. I don't know what next year is going to look like, but we're on our way. And the cool part is that I don't have to worry about the go-kart falling apart because God's got this. He's got a plan. He's got a new thing he wants to do. And he says, let's go. Let's go. He says, you with me? Yeah, I'm with you. I wouldn't miss it. I don't want to miss it. I want to see what God's got in this next few months. Here, here, there. I want to see what God has in store for us because here's the thing I know. It'll be good. It's not meant to hurt me. And it's going to be something that I've never seen before. Because I hasn't seen and ear hasn't heard. And I serve a God who is able to do an abundantly above and beyond what I can imagine. Stand with me, please. Father, we thank you for your faithfulness in times past. And if we could really get going this morning, uh, we could sit here for a long time and talk about the faithfulness of God in 2019 and in 2018 and in 2017 and just on and on because our lot, we're here today because of your faithfulness. Somehow, in some way, you were faithful that, and it sustained us to this point. You're not going to change. You're not going to stop. Your faithfulness will continue through however many days ahead that we have through 2020, through 2021, and on and on till Christ comes back. Your faithfulness is there to sustain us. And so God, whether we're struggling with things coming out of 19, worried about things coming up this next year, I pray God for the peace of God that surpasses all understanding to be ours. I pray for an excitement of what God has in store that we've not seen yet, we've not even heard about yet, and we haven't even begun to imagine it yet. But your great faithfulness has this plan for each and every one of us. And you told us to forget the past, not to hang on to it, but to look forward to the new thing that you want to do. And so we say yes to that. And we say thank you for your great faithfulness. And we'll give you praise and we'll give you thanks now in the name of Jesus. Amen. Amen. God bless you. Thanks again for joining us for this teaching of God's Word. If you're ever in eastern Iowa, anywhere close to Troy Mills, Iowa, you're welcome to join us every Sunday morning at 10 o'clock right here in the sanctuary. I promise you there will be a seat just for you. Thank you again for joining us and may the Lord richly bless you as you continue to follow after Him. God bless.